Hello, hello, hello. I'm Philip with Real Python, and I'm super happy that you're joining me today on this Python Basics Exercises course where you will practice scopes. Our exercises courses are all about training. You'll train the process of writing code by solving carefully selected exercises. You'll also train reading over other people's code and communicating your thought process. Doing all that, you'll practice the concepts that you've learned about in an associated course or tutorial and help make them stick. In the upcoming lessons, I'll introduce you to tasks, give you an opportunity to solve them yourself, and then show you step-by-step -step how I solved each of them. You'll go through three steps for each task. Learn about the exercise, code your own solution, and then you'll compare your solution with mine. When I walk you through a task, I'll explain what I do and also why I do it like that. That will give you a chance to compare not just our final solution, but also how we got there. Before starting this course, you should have watched the Python Basics course on scopes. If you went through that course, then you're well equipped to solve the tasks that I'll throw at you. The concepts that you will practice in this course will be spotting scopes, working with the global keyword, exploring the locals function, and using the return statement. If you're somewhat familiar with these concepts and you want to strengthen your knowledge with some practical programming tasks, then this course is exactly right for you. You'll also organize a small party, so any previous knowledge about that is helpful, but luckily not needed. Because sometimes spontaneous parties are the best parties. Before you get started, there's another tiny bit of background for this course, which is that I'll use IDLE, the integrated development and learning environment that comes bundled with Python. If you've gone through the Python Basics courses, then you're already familiar with the tool. If not, then you can check out these associated courses that cover getting started with IDLE. If you're just here to train and you're familiar with other code editors, then feel free to use whatever tool you like to solve the upcoming coding tasks. All right, that's all for the preparations. Let's have some fun. Here comes the first exercise, mouse in the cabinet. In the program on the left, you can find these variables and functions, address, cabinet items, basement items, and print. From the perspective of the mouse in the cabinet, order them into the four scopes, local, enclosing, global, and built-in. You can find the function that you see on the slide in the supporting materials and also in the slides that you can download. You may be wondering what from the perspective of the mouse means, because that's not a proper Python term, right? So let's have a quick look at the code on the left. There is a function named explore basement that contains another function named explore cabinet. And this function contains a doc string with a mouse emoji. You need to look at the scopes from the perspective of the mouse, meaning where this doc string is. And then look out from this part of the code into the code that's around it, and then order the scopes for the names that I just mentioned before. Again, you can find the code in the supporting materials to look at it, but keep in mind that you don't need to write code on your own in this exercise. So pause this course, look at the code, Think about your own solution, and once you're ready, hop over to the next lesson where I'll give you my solution. The cabinet items, which is a list of the keys and the sunglasses, is the local scope from the perspective of the mouse. And then in the enclosing scope, you can find the basement items, which are bed and cabinet in a list. So from the perspective of the mouse, that's not in the function where the mouse is sitting in, but it's inside of the enclosing function, which is explore basement. And so there is the enclosing scope with basement items. Then in the global scope, there is address. If you have a look at the code, there is no function surrounding the address variable, but it's just sitting there. So that's the global scope. And you will work with this global scope in this Python Basics exercises video course here and there. So make a mental note for this one. And then the print function is in the built-in scope because it's available in Python anywhere. So that makes the print function part of the built-in scope. And now the fun begins. You decide to throw a party with the mouse. 
after cleaning up all the items that are lying around, so that were the keys, the sunglasses, the bed and the cabinet apparently, you want to hang up some signs so the guests can find their way into the mouse's cabinet. Have a look at the program below. Can you guess how the output of the program looks? Again, if you're not seeing the code here on the slide, you can download the supporting materials where you can find the code. Of course, with this code, you could just execute it and then you would know how the output looks, but try to not execute this program and just try to think how the output would look without running it. And once you have thought of your solution and maybe written it down, you can find me in the next lesson where I'll give you my solution. Here I am in idle. On the right side, you see the idle editor and on the left side, you see the idle shell where I'll run the program in a moment. But before running it, let's go through the code. On the line one to nine, you see the function definition of explore basement. There are two print function calls inside of it, but when you define a function in Python, it's not executed yet. So let's move on to line 12, where you define the variable address, which says Python palace. And then only on line 13, you actually call the explore basement function. Now you can jump back into line one and explore the explore basement function, what's happening there. In line two, inside the explore basement function, there is an explore cabinet function until line five. So again, anything inside of it is not executed yet. Python only registers, okay, there is an explore cabinet function I should know about, but unless it's executed, I basically don't care that much. So again, let's jump ahead now to line seven, where you define another address variable, which is called mouse house. And then you call the explore cabinet function in line eight. So now you can look what's inside the explore cabinet function, which is in line three, the mouse doc string, hello mouse. And in line four, another address variable with the string cookie cabinet. And then in line five, the print function call of address. So that's actually the moment where the program for the first time calls the print function. And you call the print function with the address variable. Now, there are multiple address variables in this code. Think a moment which address variable Python would take at this place. When Python looks for names, it starts with the local scope. And the local scope right now is the explore cabinet function. So the address variable in line four is taken first, which is cookie cabinet. So this will be the first output. Then let's jump ahead to line nine. It's the line after the explore cabinet function call. And here again, you have a print function call. And again, you pass in address. At this point, the local scope is the explore basement function. So the address variable now is not the one that was an explore cabinet, which was cookie cabinet, but it's the one in the explore basement function, which is mouse house. So the second output will be mouse house. And with this, you basically executed the explore basement function and you return to line 13 and can move to the next line, which is the last print function call. And again, it's calling address. And now you look for the address in this scope, which is basically now the local scope, but also the global scope. So there might be a bit of a mind twist there. And you pass an address into the print function call. And in the same scope of this print function call is the address variable in line 12, which is Python palace. So the output should be cookie cabinet, mouse house, and Python palace. Let's try it out. You can run Python files in idle by clicking the run menu item and clicking run module or using the F5 shortcut. And as you can see, the output is cookie cabinet, mouse house, and Python palace. Coincidentally, the output is exactly the order which the variables are defined in the Python code, line four, line seven, and line 12, or the print function calls after that. But that's not always the case. So don't get confused by this one, but follow the Python program through the scopes to know 
when Python outputs what. And in this case, it's Cookie Cabinet, Mouse House, and Python Palace. These are fun names and great places to have a party, in my opinion. <laughs>